Hi guys, I'm, I'm Shreyas and I'm studying in 4th standard. In the last part I did about uh, the word continents and geography. So, and world geography. So, uh, to, today in part 2 I'll do some facts about the solar system. The solar system is really a huge place. It was born about 4.6 billion year, years ago when two giant clouds of gas and dust were smashing around each other, were revolving around each other, they absorbing little of their dust and gas while they pass. Then a, a giant supernova appeared. Supernova it, when, happens when a large star, at least four to four to five times more massive than mass than our sun ex dies. It its core shrinks while its while its outer layers expand. Then everything compresses and with the force of the core which can no longer hold the pressure, the core pushes an immense pull of gravity that makes the outer layer go hugely in a fast distance to a vast in a vast distance in a very high speed which looks like an explosion this is what we call the supernova explosion in a hyper giant star we call it a hypernova in when a hyper giant star dies we call it a hypernova a more like a more powerful version of a supernova so when a supernova exploded the shock wave of the supernova these both the clouds and the clouds collided shooting matter in all directions also in a neutron star which a neutron star means when when a hypernova or supernova explodes so when you when you see that you can say you can say that the neutron star may have got destroyed, but the solar system was born 4.6 billion years ago. First, it started very fast, slowed down. In the center of the solar system, heat began rising, and a, a new born star, called the, which we call the sun, was formed. The sun, then, the outer planets of Jupiter. Jupiter was formed. Earth, Venus and Mercury were also formed but they were toasted and no atmosphere was there. Since there was no atmosphere, they were toasted away by the sun. But when Jupiter came, it collided with all these planets. Some of the matter on those planets went into the sun. But, but when Jupiter migrated away, it pushed the asteroids from the asteroid belt to form a cute Mercury and the other two rocky big planets, Venus, Earth and uh, the other, our small dead neighbor Mars. We can terraform these rocky planets but not these gaseous planets. Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune. They are two are cold and two are stormy. We can't even land on their surface because there is none. It's full of atmosphere gas. And hydrogen, hi, only hydrogen water. Metallic hydrogen, I'll say. So, okay, now let me tell facts about some facts about each planet and the sun. The sun is not a giant ball of fire. It may look like a giant ball of fire and it may look yellow, but no, that's not true. The sun is a white star and it's full of gas. In the core, hydrogen fuses into helium and then com comes out and forms plasma. Plasma state is a stage where the uh, when a temp when an object reaches a certain high level of temperature, it begins to burn. But when it's too much high, even for burning, this becomes a fire kind of thing, but it's not a fire. It's not a type of fire, but it's plasma. Usually, plasma occurs when the temperature is about 1500 degrees Celsius. So, so let us move on from the sun to the smallest planet Mercury. Mercury has some water vapor in a vapor form which is very which is very like very special or can I say 
very rare because where the sun with the sun will boil the water away so it become so there's vapor only on the there's only vapor when the when the planet had an atmosphere it was lava the lava then cooled into rock which then melted into water which then formed the water vapor when mercury totally lost its atmosphere let moving on to venus we have the set we have the sixth largest planet in the solar system it's it's also called the twin sister to earth earth because it's almost the same size plus venus has a lot of active volcanoes scientists and uh, scientists and astronomers believe that venus's volcanoes erupted all at once forming a huge carbon dioxide greenhouse effect this trap this traps the heat of the sun and makes the planet hotter than mercury mercury only reaches a surface temperature of 806 degrees fahrenheit versus venus is 900 degrees fahrenheit but so there is 92 degrees fahrenheit more temperature on venus than mercury but one more thing is on venus is that you will actually get like you will just um, gas out gas out because the venus the, the planet has a poisonous gas atmosphere moving on to our planet it's in the habitable zone it's earth earth is the only planet that can sustain life although humans are polluting this planet moving on to from earth to mars we get the fourth planet from the sun mars is a small planet bigger than mercury but smaller than the other planets except for pluto asteroids and other things so mars has two ice two ice caps and two small ice caps in the magnetic poles as well mars is only the only planet which can have planet wide storms even jupiter and saturn can it could be is that but mars planet wide storms only exist at least for 1 to 2 months not even 2 to 5 months okay so moving on from mars we get the asteroid belt which is between mars and the largest planet jupiter the asteroid belt is full of asteroids and is <coughs> home for very large asteroids also dwarf and also dwarf planets so this the sometimes this asteroid belt contains very huge asteroids which are sometimes called dwarf which are which some are called dwarf planets itself that's super cool moving on we moving on from the asteroid belt we get the king of the planets which is also the fifth jupiter jupiter is the stormiest planet in in the entire solar system and plus it's the fastest rotating and the largest these three categories make it makes it un habitable habitat destruction on the planet who i don't want to go there and i don't want to to, to talk about so that jupiter doesn't swallow me let's go to saturn we go to the ringed planet the rings are made of ice rocks and dust so the planet is large which the planet which is large like jupiter is the queen of the solar system because of its beautiful rings plus it also has stormy stormy conditions like jupiter except a little smaller next we get to the tilted planet uranus uranus is tilted on its side scientists believe it could be a huge asteroid collision or a mega planet collision whatever its axis is tilted like like in sideways like uh, when you sleep sideways so the planet the planet is also stormy and pressure and it has a lot of pressure and it's also freezing the the maximum 
lowest temperature ever recorded in the entire planet system was minus 399 degrees Fahrenheit on Uranus. That's too cold. I don't want to get frigid and, and gassy at the same time. Let's skip on to Neptune. Neptune is the eighth planet with a frigid wind and dark blue storm storms. So Neptune is since it's the eighth planet, it's the farthest from the sun in a planetary system. Moving on from Neptune, we get the Kuiper Belt, which is also known for all, most of the dwarf planets existence. Example, Pluto, Maya, Maki Maki. So, the Kuiper Belt is all an icy region, but it's divided into two halves. The closest part of the Kuiper Belt to Neptune is the asteroid. It's, a, it's full of asteroids. And the other side, which is facing away from Neptune, is full of icy comets from the Oort cloud. Moving on from the Kuiper Belt, we get the Oort cloud. We get some small planets like Quarus, Edna, and DD there. Dwarfs. So, the Kuiper Belt sends the, some comets, and it's full of comets, and sends some comets to the Kuiper Belt's other side, which faces us away from. Now, if we jump out, we get we go out from the solar system. Let's stay in Earth for now. So, bye! And also, don't leap out of the solar system. It will take you at least 40 years. Bye!